this part of the Jane Birch story, we deal with collecting the brood stock from the wild. To produce good quality fingerlings and fry, it is absolutely necessary that wild fish are continually added to the breeding pool. The only place to collect jade perch in the wild is from the Baku River. We know for sure that the jade perch collected from the Baku River have the right eating qualities. These fish are scientifically known as Scortum Baku. To bring you this part of the jade perch stories, we have cameras everywhere. On our heads, in trees, in our hand of course, and even in the air. During this part of the jade perch story, you'll see us using gill nets. The use of gill nets is strictly illegal without a permit. Not to have any fish, I'd rather not have bones too. Not having a permit attracts heavy penalties. Those penalties include large fines, the confiscation of all your equipment and even the loss of your vehicle. It's going to take some skill. Heaven. Jade perch weren't always known as jade perch. They were originally called Baku Grunter. Many years ago, three of those original pioneer farmers, Ross Mamino, Stan Moore, Michael Hickey, and myself, met to decide the future name. This is where the name jade perch was finally adopted. Later in the jade perch story we'll show you why jade was the colour chosen. There are three main habitat areas in these big water holes. The large deep expanses of water that extend for many kilometres and then towards the end narrow areas that aren't quite so deep but still don't have so many snags. And then finally, right at the end, usually the beginning of these water holes, that is upstream, narrow wooded areas with lots of snags and theoretically good habitat for fish. We placed our net in each of these habitat areas. The first area we're going to look at now is the narrow snagged area. It looked very promising. There were a lot of trees and bushes and branches in the water. At first, we thought the end of the water hole was actually quite close. It appeared that the water hole ended just around the corner. But once we got in the boat and started to explore, we found that this narrow, snaggy area went on for several kilometres. It was quite difficult to find a suitable site to set our net. We wanted to find a spot where there was good habitat and yet an area open enough that our nets wouldn't become fouled in all the snags.
After several attempts, we finally got the net set in this snaggy area. While we let the net do its job, we checked our set lines. These are heavy fishing line tied to branches and sticks using circle hooks baited with fresh prawns caught from the river. This method was particularly disappointing. We were able to catch golden perch, but virtually no jade perch. I wonder if this is a really windy day, is that something that you can see this whole moving or hiding somewhere? Possibly. After checking our set lines, we head back up to the narrow end of the waterhole to see if we've been successful with our gill net. It's a long way back to our net, and like most fishermen, we've got a very positive attitude towards catching some fish. So with that in mind, we fill up the tub in the boat that will carry our fish back to the camp. We arrive at the net and position ourselves so that we can run along the net and look for some fish. Collecting jade perch from the wild is a very expensive process. Not just in dollars, this trip cost us over $2,000, but also in man hours for preparation and all the paperwork we have to fill out. The pressure is really on us to catch fish. Not a very good result this time as we go through the net, just more bony brim to throw back. So far, it looks like I didn't need to fill that tub up with water. As we reach the end of the net, not a single jade perch for our tub. We wait a little while and then return to check the nets. Once again, I'm reminded that jade perch aren't the only fish here that have spike. between checking the net, we take in some of nature's wonders. It's soon time to go back to the net and see if our luck's changed. It certainly has changed. 
somebody must have sent the invitations oh, out. Every fish in the system has turned up in our nets. Bony brim, golden perch, and right here you can see there are two nice juvenile jade perch. Another pair of scissors here. No. We've added a little tranquilizer to our tub so the fish won't stress while they wait for us to return them to the camp. With the net now removed from the water and a good catch in our tub, we head back to the camp and the safety of the transported tank for our freshly captured rootstock. It's been a long day. We can't wait to have our fish safely in the transporter tank and a bit of a break around the campfire this evening. Five fish, that's pretty good considering the really slow start. The anaesthetic has kept them in nice condition too. They're pretty doby, but soon they'll be swimming around in the back of the truck in our transporter tank. It's a long way up this bank. I suppose I could use the exercise. In fact, I lost three kilos during the week that we were camped here. Before we release each fish into the tank, we make sure that it's recovered sufficiently from the tranquilizer that it's been in while in the boat. fish are looking good and I can actually hear them swimming around in the tank bumping into the sides. You can hear them all banging around inside the tank. <laughs> Under our permit conditions we must keep a record of how many fish we catch and where we catch them. Coffee time, I'll just do the bookkeeping. coffee. Back at the camp we find we've got a visitor. One of the large local goannas have dropped in to say good day. Doesn't seem to be a bit worried about being around us either. Something else we have to put up with out here, the infamous Australian bushfly, and there's no shortage of them. Another one of the local inhabitants, a lot more welcome than the bushflies, are the beautiful butterflies that we see in the area. We inject pure oxygen into the water, but as well as that, we operate an air pump with the backup. The air pump helps mix the oxygen throughout the tank water. We also closely monitor the water quality in the tank. We'll check the ammonia and then the pH. Ammonia with my quick test. So if there's any ammonia, it'll uh, 
go a little bit yellow or orange. Yeah, slight yellow colour. So it's got just a little bit of ammonia. Probably not normally enough to worry about a water change. But out here, the pH of the water that we're using from the river is really high. So with a high pH and a little bit of ammonia, it's very dangerous. So if this goes really blue, we need to do a water change. And it's really alkaline. So water change is essential. Actually, the water pump we brought with us is not powerful enough to push the water up to the top of the bank and into the tank. As you can see, as we raise the hose, the head pressure becomes too much and the pump stops. Not even close to the height that our tank is at. This means we're going to have to find a site to do a water change first thing in the morning. But for now, it's what's for dinner and for our first night we're going to have a nice juicy piece of steak as you can see we're a little bit lazy we're not using the campfire we like to take advantage of all the mod cons of this day and age and with full bellies and a glass of wine in our hand we enjoy the campfire but what's that now that's a nasty looking spider fangs the size of three inch nails What's that on its back? Is that a wasp larvae or something? I've no idea what kind of spider this is, but it looks really nasty. Yellow spots on its back and just sitting there waiting to chomp into us. With this fellow on our minds, time to get some sleep. Let's hope this bloke's not part of our dreams. We've got a big day tomorrow with the water change and catching lots of fish. What could go wrong? <laughs> you just broke the clamp. We fish the part of the water hole that's in between the narrow snaggy area and the very large white deep section. We catch a lot of fish and a lot of different fish. So come back for the next part and see what spots we do there. next. No spots there. Oh, look at this. And a nice jade perch. 